What's up guys, Wasp here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing my very best to break down why Mohamed Light is the best Clash Royale player in the world right now. So obviously, this is pretty complex, and there's many factors that go into why a Clash Royale player is as good as they are, especially the one who's the very best in the game. But luckily, I got some help on this, and once again, if you guys remember, I did a top 10 tips video and they were the tips from Surge TS, and basically I reviewed them, I agreed with a good amount of them, and then I added my own input. This video is going to be the same type of style. So Surge TS put together a really nice post here, listing five pretty big reasons why he's as good as he is. Luckily for you guys, these are not the only five things there are, and I'm going to add on to a lot of what Surge TS has said. One thing I would like to say though before we start the video off, it's a request actually from you guys. You guys watching can help out right now. I have until November 21st. I figured this would be a good time to announce it because I'm already on Twitter right now for this video anyway. I also posted this on my YouTube community tab. Basically, there's a big event coming up with a $30,000 prize pool. There were eight players who were invited, and then the community picks eight more players. Right now, I'm in sixth or seventh place, so I'm still in the top eight for the interactions, but if you guys would be so kind as to retweet and like this, my reply I did to this post, that would help me out. Thank you guys who do that, and I'm also doing a giveaway, so I'm going to be giving people, 10 people, my friend link who do do that. All right, guys, now let's get into it. So, Search GS writes here, Muhammad Light's the best player in the entire world. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, he won the World Finals, a $250,000 prize pool. He says he's been keeping a close eye on his gameplay for a while, and these are the five main things that set him apart from the other players in Clash Royale. So the first one right here, he is not predictable. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know inside of this game, the vast majority of you guys, probably most of you guys watching this video, only use one deck on ladder. That is not at all the case for him and the players who, the, who are the very, very best in the game. They can use anything in the game perfectly. Some of you guys who watch my videos think I'm very good at this game and I know how to play a lot of decks well. I am nowhere near the level of Muhammad Light with versatility. He can play every single deck you can think of inside of this game perfectly. Even the best one tricks with the deck, he's as good as they are with it. And that really shows you how much he's mastered the game. You can see right here, Search GS says back in the day, it was easier to know which decks he was going to play, but it's been a while since that has changed. When he first started playing the game, he was mostly known as a cycle player. He mostly ran minor cycle. He was also very good with bridge spam, mortar, but he wasn't that great with beatdown and heavier kinds of decks. But that has changed, and you can see here, he became a great player with 90% of the meta decks in the game with the help of the best coach in the entire game. I would actually disagree with this 90%. I don't think there's a single deck in the game he can't play. He's pretty humble, so he'll, of course, probably say there's a couple things he hasn't mastered yet, but I, I think he, he pretty much can play everything in the entire game. And when he says the best coach in the game here, let me explain that a little bit. If you guys don't know who Jabuz is, Jabuz is basically the player who helps Mohamed Light in competitions, in events. He's his coach. You could call him an analyst. He's the one that helps him pick the decks. And I think this is very underrated in Clash Royale. I think people don't understand the importance of coaches. They don't get the credit they deserved because he has worked with Muhammad Light for an extremely long time, over a year now. And he's part of Mo's success because he's in charge of getting him good matchups because in Clash Royale, matchups are very important. You don't want to get hard countered. Jabuz was with Mo at the World Finals. Coaches were not allowed to go on stage, but he spent several hours in preparation. Mo brought him, you know, the plane ticket, um, the, the hotel covered his expenses so that Jabuz could come along, and basically, you were allowed to bring a paper on stage, you were allowed to discuss with your coach beforehand, so they were doing all of that, and that greatly helped Mo's success, because Jabuz has a great knowledge of this game. He was never a top-tier professional player, but he played semi-pro, and having a knowledgeable coach getting you good matchups and helping you alongside and competitive is very important and very underrated, so I really wanted to stress that point. Next up, we got he manages the advantage. He doesn't take damage because of poor card placements 99% of the time. So what he's saying by this is Muhammad Light doesn't really ever make mistakes. If he takes damage, it's not because he took a mistake. It's not because he made a mistake. It's because it was either a horrible matchup or because he had a bad card cycle. That's what Surge is saying by this. 
because of poor card placements 99% of the time, because he doesn't make mistakes. If you watch Muhammad Light's gameplay, or if you, you know, ever play with him, I'm someone who's practiced with him, and I might get into that a little more later as we talk about how good his mentality and his mindset is, and it really, that really gets reflected in practices. I'll explain that later. He doesn't make mistakes. If that wasn't obvious, that's one of the main reasons why he's as good as he is. I mean, 99% of the time, no one's perfect, so you might see him make one mistake out of hundreds of interactions. It's like, that's that's incredible. I mean, no one comes close to that. And then when he gets a good damage lead, he doesn't attack as much, and he forces opponents to come at him to expose himself. That way, he's always in control. So yeah, I really like that point as well. If you watch a lot of Light's games... You'll notice how when he gets comfortable and he's in a position where he's winning by so much. Let's say he takes a tower. I watch a lot of bad players who will be up so much and then they're so aggressive still. I'll see people running a beatdown deck and they take a tower, right? And maybe they immediately go golem in the back and set up a push to take another tower. Or go for the three crown or lava hound in the back, electro giant, whatever the case is. And that's not really what you want to do. If there's like, you know, a minute, minute and a half of the game left, two minutes you might as well just defend if you have a big lead. And that is really shown in his gameplay. You see him play pretty defensive, calm, and patient. And I think even some good players don't do that sometimes. You really have to identify the position you're in and understand, you know, you just have to hold off for a little longer and you're going to win just by, you know, having your tower up, you took theirs. So there's no need to apply pressure, especially when you're running a heavier deck. Next up, he adapts quickly. He's never, he never enters a match with a pre-made strategy. Instead, he uses the start of the match to understand what his opponent's playstyle and which deck he's playing against. So he adapts his offense and defense accordingly in order to take full advantage. So yeah, similar to what I just talked about, about how he's smart when he has a lead, he doesn't go too aggressive. This also is in the start of the match, what he does. He makes very smart plays, not ones that are risky. So when we talk about risky plays, I'll just name a couple I already mentioned. Lava in the back first play, Golem in the back first play. That's not what you want to do. And this is kind of what I assume he's talking about when he says pre-made strategy. Every match is separate. So he doesn't do the same thing at the start of every match. It really depends on his cycle. Unless he's using a cheap deck, right? He might go Hog first play. He might go Drill first play. But you don't want to be going in with a strategy. The best players in this game react to what their opponent does. Because remember, your tower hit points, they're a resource, your defense is a resource, and you want to counter push off of what they're doing. And this gets into understanding the opponent's playstyle and what deck they're playing against. Because every opponent has a different playstyle, even though they might be playing a different deck. Some opponents like to be aggressive the whole game, keep putting the pressure on, and you have to be ready with your defense, where some are passive. And of course, this also depends on, of course, how heavy the deck is, but even with the same deck, every opponent is different, and you have to adjust your playstyle a little bit to outplay them, and Muhammad Light does exactly that, and this, in the next one I'm going to show you guys, is a per perfect representation of that. This gets into this right here. He just needs one opportunity. He doesn't pressure all the time. He doesn't pressure all the time. One opportunity, so if you slip up one time, or he sees something most people don't, He's able to win the game. So before I show this video, which I'm sure you guys who watch World Finals have already seen this, but it's a great example of this. Mohamed Light, the reason he's different than some of the best players in the game, even people like Morton, even people like Lucas, you know, whoever is you consider to be great at this game, Ruben, they all play the game correctly. They don't really make mistakes, same as Mo, but the difference is... Mohamed Light is someone that makes more predictions and tries to really put himself in uncomfortable, you know, situations. So you see right here, gives the opponent a false sensation of comfort. So this game, it's like, which I'll show in the video, it's pretty much even Steven, you know, and then out of nowhere, Mohamed Light does one thing and completely changes the control of the match, which is something that pretty much no one else does, unless they get lucky. But the difference with Muhammad Light is it's all pretty calculated. He knows it's going to be uncomfortable for his opponent to deal with. So after just one mistake, or they give him just a little... After they make one mistake, or they give him just too much room or space, and they make a mistake, he takes it and wins the game. So here's where I'll showcase the video. 
want to make sure it's quiet so it's not blasting. But as you can see, I'll pause it throughout to show what I'm talking about. Morton cycled a giant skeleton in the back. The miner and bats was Muhammad Light's prediction on knowing Morton was going to play something in the back because the best players in the game always know the elixir. So Muhammad Light knew he was full on elixir. He likely was going to build a push in the back, either cycling a giant skeleton or a queen. Morton does exactly what Muhammad Light wanted by cycling that giant skeleton in the back. Guards come out, which is nine. Look at Morton's deck. A lot of players don't realize this, especially in intense situations. This is the world finals and actually the grand finals. So whoever won this was the world champion. But Muhammad Light was still competent enough to know at this time that Morton has nothing for the Skeleton King, especially when he's low on Elixir. Look at Morton's deck. He doesn't have a single good counter to the Skeleton King. Snowball is somewhat decent against it, but after the Snowball is used on the bats, Mo goes in for the Skarmie, as you can see, and he's got nothing. And this is what I'm, this is what we're talking about when we say one thing changes the game, because look at the game right now. It's even. And then one push, Muhammad Light does. One record you know, recognition of, you know, Morton potentially going for something in the back results in him pretty much taking the whole tower. Now, I do want to mention there was a small mistake. Morton could have played the poison a couple tiles back, but this is exactly why Mohammed Light is so good. When you put your opponent in an uncomfortable position, even when they are as good as Morton is, who I consider a top three player in the game right now, which I'm sure you all would agree with, if you do something that is unexpected, you're way more likely to make a mistake, hence why you want to put them in uncomfortable positions at the correct times. And that is really shown by that right there. That doesn't mean you want to be stupid aggressive the whole time. What it means is, is when it's a tight game, and it seems like both players are kind of as you would call in like a stalemate, like in chess, both of them aren't really doing anything, they're not really breaking through and getting damage, you need to identify that, and you need to do something differently. If you do the same thing the whole match, and everyone knows what the other one's going to do, it's going to result in one of them barely winning at the end, and you don't want that. You know, you don't want to be it coming down to the luck of the draw, like who gets more chip. You want to try to do something to change the tide of the game, and that's what that video represented. I hope I'm explaining this well. Obviously, I can't go inside of the mind of Muhammad Light, but these are the kind of things that you want to be doing to improve your gameplay. This is by far the most important thing, and this is where, after I'm done explaining this one, I'm going to also give some more things, too, that I know about Muhammad Light that I want to show you guys. So, of course, he practices a lot. I mean, this is... Like, I mean, look at this, this picture right here. Notice how... As you can see, he's got two accounts in, you know, the top 13. And there were many times where he's got both of his accounts, like, in the top five. I mean, he's finished number one on ladder, like, eight times now, I think, or seven at least. Surge says here, The only way that a player at this level can become washed or lose his levels, he stops practicing. Well, bad news for every CR pro. He's not slowing down at all and is always looking to improve. He never gets bored of the game. This is an excellent point. Because, and I'm not calling people out in a bad way, because obviously Surgical Goblin is one of the goats, we all know that, he will never be, in fact, many people still consider him the goat, even though Muhammad Light is as good as he is. Well, as you, a lot of you guys know, Surgical Goblin became kind of, as you could say, washed. He lost a lot of his skill, he lost a lot of his level, even though he was the best in the game. The main difference between Surgical Goblin and Muhammad Light is the motivation, Muhammad Light loves the game still. In fact, it seems like he's enjoying it more and more as he's just getting better and better at the game, which was not the case for Surgical Goblin. Surgical Goblin had these times where he took a couple months off after the CRL season and he didn't play ladder. That's not the case for Muhammad Light. He's playing ladder every single season. He's playing lots of other competitions besides CRL. He's practicing with friendly battles. He plays this game pretty much every minute of free time he has. I do want to mention he's an excellent student. He is in school, and I do know I think he is planning to go to college or university after. By the way, everything I'm sharing, he's fine with people knowing. Uh, his mom is very supportive of him and his career and is also making sure he's doing well in education. He's just a, he's a very intelligent, hardworking person overall, if I had to describe him. Very humble as well. And yeah, this is just a great way to explain it. He's so hardworking, he's so motivated, so disciplined. Unlike Surgical Goblin, 
he's going to be the best player in this game without a doubt um, in pretty much indefinitely until he loses interest in the game. That's a guarantee. And as of now, he's still interested. You can see search GS posts a poll here. I actually voted in this myself. Um, he, like he's unstoppable. And you can see most people think that do you, like, do you think anyone's going to surpass most skill? No, like, I don't think so. And most people agree with that. There's, there's no way. I mean, he's, he is for sure. I don't think anyone could argue this. He's the best person to ever touch this game. Basically. I don't think he'll ever be surpassed, and now after I shared all of those things to you guys, hopefully I'm talking at an alright pace here, I just want to make, you know, there's a lot of things I wanted to say this video, and I didn't want it to be carried out incredibly long, so I, you know, apologize if I'm talking quickly. So I guess to close all of this out, um, I guess it's kind of going along with the practicing point. Muhammad Light has one of the best mindsets I've ever seen in this game as well. I don't think he's always had this mindset. Of course, he's gotten some help from his coaches, helping him, like, stay calm and have a growth mindset. If you guys don't know what a growth mindset is, it basically means you believe you can pretty much always get better at this game. I think a lot of you guys watching um, would agree with me that some people have more of a fixed mindset, as you could call it, and you, you think you're, you're bad, there's, like, no way you're going to be able to get better, and you kind of, like, limit yourself instead of, you know thinking you can change what you do adapt work harder and he's a perfect example of that sometimes i forget that as well and what's really helped me is when i'm i notice i play a lot better when i'm confident and when i'm also pretty certain that i'm i have way more potential than i do and as good as muhammad light is he's always trying to improve i know this because i've even practiced with him he practices with a lot of different people and I'll tell you guys right now, when I practice with him, something I noticed that I thought was really crazy, and it shows you how he's different than a lot of other people. A lot of players in this game, when they get a bad matchup, even if they're practicing or it's a competition, when they get a bad matchup and lose, they think to themselves, well, it was just a bad matchup. You know, they use that as an excuse, and I'm not going to lie. I do that too. I'm not perfect on that. I need to get better at that, thinking, you know, well, I could have done some things better. You know, I could have maybe done this prediction i could have maybe tried to put him in an uncomfortable position which is what muhammad light does all the time to outplay bad matchups when i was practicing with muhammad light believe it or not i actually ended up well it's because he wanted to redo the matchup but i had a hard counter against him i would say almost a complete 100 0 and i beat him and instead of us just continuing i thought we were going to continue the dual set we were playing and continue the practice he insisted to repeat it i beat him again again he wanted to repeat it. And after beating him for a third time, we finally moved on. But every time we played the matchup, he made the game closer. And he played differently. He did things differently to try to have a different outcome. And I think that is by far one of the most important things inside of this game. If you get a bad matchup and you think, it's just impossible, I can't do anything, you're already setting yourself up for failure when you match the matchup. You're, you're getting inside of your own head. And that is not what you want. Muhammad Light, when he's playing a game, he's locked in focused, doing everything perfect on his end to win the match. It doesn't matter what the matchup is. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. He's confident in his ability, and he just plays the game how he knows he does. And that's what he talks about in group chats as well. He no longer cares what the balance changes are. He doesn't care what the meta is because of how good he is. There's a lot of top ladder players that cry, about the balance changes. Some of them are very good, even like top 10 players in this game, complain, cry about the balance changes. The difference with Muhammad Light is he doesn't do that. He'll of course recommend things that are too strong that need nerf, but he doesn't complain about it too much. He figures it out, he learns the new meta, and he continues to be the very best. So that's what a lot of it is at the end of the day. I think mindset is extremely important. Even if someone has the talent, if they have a horrible mindset, can really screw them up sometimes. And I also want to mention there are some talent aspects to this. Another reason why I think he's the very best in this game is we can't deny there's talent. As good as his mindset is, as good as his work ethic is, there's always talent in everything. Now obviously unlike sports and video games, you, how tall you are, that doesn't really matter. You know, how much you weigh, that of course doesn't matter. What I'm talking about, though, is reaction time. 
you obviously can improve your reaction time a little bit, but being quick inside of this game is extremely important. Being able to react to things super fast, because inside of this game, milliseconds matter and can make the difference of games, whether, you know, something gets one less hit or you're able to play, react so quickly and then they don't have elixir to respond to it. There's so many situations where that matters. And also being able to process, you know, doing the next play in your head. I, I, just, I often sometimes compare Clash Royale to chess because I think in some ways they're, they have a lot in common. Obviously, they're very different games. Reaction time is important in time chess games, similar to Clash Royale. They're very strategic. You have to kind of think of what your opponent's going to do next, plan ahead, and that's very true inside his game as well. Tracking Elixir and card cycle and like i said reaction time definitely talent but i think almost everything else inside of this game you can improve upon if you have a good mindset i've said this before i think almost everyone in this game has potential to be a top at least 500 player like get a top 500 finish if they put their mind to it i don't think everyone in this game can be a top 10 player but i guarantee for all of you guys watching right now all of you I don't care what you think, you can be better than you are right now. You have more potential than you do now, and I have more potential. Even though I consider myself a good player, I'm definitely not at my peak, and I was even better than I was. Like, a couple years ago, I considered myself in my prime. I know for myself, I can get even better than that if I implement the right strategies, work hard, and, you know, change how I practice and adapt to the game. Hopefully, this video helped. I have no idea how you guys are going to consider this video, but if it was very helpful, make sure to show a lot of support by liking the video and subscribing. Let me know you want to see something like this again. Maybe I can do a video like this on Morton to explain why he's as good as he is, because let me tell you right now, it's certainly going to be a little different than Mohammed Light, because Morton has less talent than Mohammed Light, and it's more so hard work. So yeah, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you guys did end up enjoying it. Thanks again. Until next time, guys.